arrangements within the criminal procedure. And once you accept a particular arrangement, you must as well abide by the principles in there. Generally, an accused person may be sentenced to prison as well as be given an opportunity to make a re reparation and restitution, that is retain stolen goods or stolen money. But the public must appreciate that the case under reference is not an ordinary case of stealing. You know, when you look at Section 35 of the Cause Act, it does not talk about an ordinary stealing or ordinary case of fraud. It talks about a criminal offense that involves economic loss to the state. And I think this particular element is missing in the public discussions. Because when somebody steals a good belonging to a farmer, or somebody steals money belonging to a, a, a community bank, this is a case of stealing, but certainly not one that involves financial loss to the state. And so the regime under Section 35 is that when the offense involves economic loss to Ghana as a state, that is where that session can be triggered. Is that not why the punishment must be heavy? Well, if we have to criticize, we don't need to criticize the Attorney General. We don't need to criticize the court. We need to criticize Parliament for passing this law. The law is that when the case like this comes to the court, the accused person has the right to make an offer of reparation and compensation. And it is within the Attorney General's discretion to accept that offer. And further, it is within the discretion of the court to also accept that offer. And when that offer has been accepted by the court or the court finds it satisfactory, there is no further option for the court than to, acquit, um, to, to uh, convict the accused on his own plea of guilty and then make an order that do reparation or pay compensation or make restitution. In lieu, see you read in lieu means that in place of, in place of custodial sentence. And let me say that when a court proceeds under section 35, the court will not have another option to impose custodial sentence. The, the court doesn't have a discretion. At all. There is the, no discretion. The judge shouldn't have said, look, this situation, Ghanaians, because they are actually, right now, you and I, yes. we are paying for the bank collapse. That is it. Because there's a levy on it uh, yes. in our banking you know, uh, transactions. So the court will say, be looking at what is going on, yes, you are paying uh, 57.5 million, yes. which is the actual money that we have come to agree is lost, which you must pay. And then you are making restitution of a little over 30 million. Yeah. So that's the compensation you are giving to the state, a little over 30 million. Yes. Nonetheless, we still feel that you must go to jail somehow. The judge couldn't have done that. Not under this provision. You see, the, 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 what, what we must understand is that in modern legal systems, the traditional methods of punishment are gradually being done away with. And what we call plea bargaining is also speedily and rapidly taking center stage. Plea bargaining means that we think that we should engage accused persons in a manner that ensures that they remedy the mess that they cause by their actions. So here is an accused person who has caused massive financial loss to Ghana. Let's assume that um, he did not take advantage of Section 35. He was tried under the ordinary rules of criminal procedure and was thrown into jail for, say, 50 years to rot there and to die there. Now, what would Ghana have gained? Would have gained deterrence to people who may be thinking they want to do the same to the country next time. My view 